But the important thing I have to, to start with is that if you want to go into development economics, be an economist. A lot of people that I've, I've talked to think that if you, if you want to go into development, you can focus on development. You can read the World, and World Bank's uh, sort of development reports, UN's development reports, and you can become an expert on the development side. That, that's not what our comparative advantage is. We're economists, and using economic tools and methods, we can go and find stuff out. We can analyze stuff, we can make recommendations. But only if you've got those skills. So the first thing I have to say is you should really aim to be an economist first and foremost. Economics is what we have over other people who work in development, and it's what you will be employed on. So try to be as good development as as good an economist as you can because um, economics tools are pretty unique. So whichever year you're in, take the courses seriously. Try and get good marks. Um, and, and not just good marks, try and understand the key tools of economics. You know, so you've got incentives. How can you shape incentives? Um, when you get a signal, what, what does that signal mean? Are people, you know, if in a game theory context, are people trying to game you? So understand the core fundamental uh, aspects of economics so you can apply them in a development context. That's, that's the kind of first thing I'd say. If economics isn't really your thing, but you want to work in development, uh, in, in some sense, and somehow use your economics, then develop some sort of unique specialized set of skills. So somebody that I've just uh, uh, worked with did an economics undergrad, but didn't really find it as their thing, but they still tried to get as much of economics as they could. They then did the health masters and specialized into health economics. So they learned a lot about the health side of development. So they could combine the two sets of skills. So they were still, in some sense, development economists. What they had over everyone else is this unique combination. So try in some way to get a unique combination so that the next graduate isn't just the same as you. You've got something over them. So undergraduates, um, I, I go on. I don't know how many people are thinking about doing masters and PhDs here. How many people are thinking about doing a masters? Again, I don't know about the market. So we can talk about that in a minute. But um, do do economics first. So if you're in the first year, take economics courses and be an economist. If you're in the third year, make sure you've got that set of skills and the options you're taking. Um, and if you've already chosen your options, then take seriously the economics options you have taken. I mean, some people can't stand econometrics. Um, but it is one of the key tools in an economics toolbox to be able to go to data and analyze it. So I think if you're going to if you're going to do economics, do the technical stuff, not the stuff you can read at home. Because sometimes there have been courses at UCL that have been uh, less technical than others, and people have taken them because they thought it was going to be easy. I would say don't do the opposite to that. Take take the difficult courses, um, get good grades if you can, but go and learn how to be an economist first and foremost. There is a complement to that, however, of course, um, which is the sort of second point here, uh, which is knowledge. There are lots of people who are very good economic economists. So there, there's going to be lots of people who come out of all the top London and, uh, and UK and US universities getting first or uh, comparisons to a first in their degree. What you want to do is now try and get complementary knowledge about development. So what you want to do is you want to become a really good uh, development economist. And then around that, get some understanding of how do you apply economics in the developing world. So there are kind of two aspects to that. Um, the first is that they're great complements. If you can understand economics and you can understand the context in which to apply it, I mean, that's a really powerful combination. And they're not really substitutes. So you can't really go somewhere and say, well, I'm a, I'm a bit hazy on the economics, but I really know India very well. Um, that's not useful because there's a lot of Indians who know India really well. What you want to do is you want to be able to combine the two to be able to give recommendations that are locally specific, but that play to international standards of, of, sort of economic quality theory. 
And then getting that knowledge can be done in a hundred ways. The first thing is, of course, read. So when you get home, most people here probably don't pick up an econometrics book or a microeconometrics book. I would be impressed if you do. So pick up something else. I, I put here Paul Collier's Bottom Billion because I think it's a fantastic introduction to the kinds of issues that the world is currently facing. He's written other books. A lot of his work is, at least for the beginner, very good, uh, very digestible. But there's many other ways. Um, there has been a recent move towards systematic re reviews and development. What they do is they take a question, such as what is the impact of civil war on uh, a country's development? And then they will take all of the literature around that and put it into one very digestible um, uh, publication. And that's a great way <coughs> to get involved. You can read the first the introduction to each of those, just to get a sense of the breadth of development. Um, the MIT Policy Action Lab has very uh, sort of uh, policy-friendly uh, publications and are worth reading. Um, Edipo uh, at the Institute for Fiscal Studies, where I, uh, it's not on there because they're not nearly as famous, but they have similarly got one pages where you can just go and you want to know about microfinance. So for example, in, in India at the moment, there's a crisis in microfinance. So what's the crisis about? You can go and just get that information in a one page and understand it well. Um, there's also a lot of academic literature that's easy to read. Go through the Journal of Economic Literature um, and it, the, every so often there'll be something development related, such as um, uh, on public goods. How do we provide public goods? So you will, within one paper, get an immediate understanding of all the frontier knowledge on a particular, um, particular subject. But you shouldn't stop there. So you can, and I can, I'm happy to give specific reading uh, suggestions to people if they, if they have specific areas of interest. Um, whenever you read anything about development, um, be very critical. You should be critical in everything you do, but there is a tremendous amount of development literature, and only a portion of that argues rigorously. So be critical. What is the research underlying this? What are the identification strategies, if you get that from? You know, why did this person write this, and what's it actually saying? So when you're reading this development literature, be critical. There's lots of other ways to get informed. Uh, news, so BBC clearly is, is a good way into a new country. Um, but then go to the newspapers of that country. So I'm very interested in Nigeria where I work and India where I used to work. So I check the newspapers to see what the debates are at, at the moment in those countries. And there's lots of ways of just getting stuff sent to your email. So you don't literally have to go anywhere, it's just all sent to you. Um, I find IRIN, which is the UN's news network, a fantastic way just to learn about what's going on in the developing world. And that will just be sent every week to you. You don't have to do anything. You just read the articles you want to or just the, the headline summaries. 